Going to war is a dangerous endeavor. Not only does it potentially kill thousands of your own people, it also brings substantial risk of widespread destruction, which could damage your economy for decades, even if you win the war, which isn't guaranteed either. So if the current situation doesn't provide a good enough reason to justify all of this, then it's probably wise to avoid a military escalation. Unfortunately, not always throughout human history did the people in charge view things from this logical point of view. So in this episode of Facts in Motion we are going to take a look at a few of these instances, as we count down 4 wars started for the stupidest reasons. Hope you enjoy. Number 1 In the 14th century, Northern Italy was split into two factions, one supporting the Pope, the other the Holy Roman Emperor as God's chosen representative on earth. At the center of this division were two towns, Bologna with the Pope as patron and Modena supporting the Emperor. Only 50 kilometers apart, these two towns were the hotspot for tensions between the two factions, as border skirmishes became common. But what sparked things off wasn't yet another attack by one of the sides, but the theft of a wooden bucket. The water bucket of the main well in Bologna that was taken by Modernese soldiers that secretly snuck into the town. Bologna requested the bucket to be returned, Modena refused, so war was declared. The following battle of Zapolino cost around 2000 men their lives, but despite being outnumbered 5 to 1, the Modernese forces could win the battle. The bucket was never returned and is still, to this day, visible in Modena's town hall as a memorial of the city's victory. Number 2 Mexico's independence in 1830 left the country unstable and in widespread disorder, as different factions competed for control. Neither side cared about civilian casualties or damage of private property. And since most foreigners couldn't hope for compensation from the Mexican government, they began to appeal to their respective governments for help. And so it happened that the owner of a French pastry shop reported to King Louis Philippe of France that Mexican officers looted and destroyed his shop. Louis! 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 France, which previously loaned Mexico a couple of million francs for the failed attempt to take back control over Texas, which had seceded from Mexico, probably saw this as a welcome opportunity to escalate the situation after Mexico didn't pay back the loan fast enough. After demanding an absurdly large payment of 600,000 pesos as reparations for the destruction of property of French citizens, which Mexico refused to pay, war was declared. For comparison, the pastry shop was valued at less than 1,000 pesos. In the next weeks, a blockade of all Mexican ports on the Atlantic coast was imposed and the French took control over the city of Veracruz, the most important port in the region. The war lasted for over three months and cost over 100 people their lives, before a peace treaty was signed and the Mexican government agreed to pay the 600,000 pesos. This however never happened, which later led to the second French intervention in Mexico. Number 3 San Juan Island, North America, 1959 At that time, America was already independent for almost one century, but the British still occupied the area of today's Canada. As defined in the Oregon Treaty of 1846, everything north, the 49th parallel, was part of British America. Everything south was United States territory. Vancouver Island, however, was an exceptional case, as it dipped below the 49th parallel. So the middle of the channel, which separates the continent from Vancouver Island, became the maritime border, which should separate the two countries. While seemingly simple, in actuality the countless islands within that channel made it really difficult to determine where the middle line had to go. As a result, many of the islands remained in contention for decades. This ambiguity led to a direct conflict in 1859, as an American farmer who lived on one of the islands found a pig eating his potatoes and shot it. The pig was owned by an Irishman who was furious about the dead pig and called British authorities to arrest the farmer after he had refused to pay the demanded $100 compensation. As a result, the American farmers called for military protection and the situation escalated. 
In a back and forth, both parties brought in more and more support and by the end of the year 500 Americans with 14 cannons were opposed by 5 British warships carrying over 2000 men. The conflict could only be diffused as the news reached London and Washington, which were totally unaware of the situation. Both sides quickly agreed to reduce the military occupation to 100 men respectively, till a final agreement could be reached. This happened 13 years later in 1872, as Kaiser Wilhelm I of Germany was chosen to act as an arbitrator and decided in favor of America, making San Juan Islands part of the United States. The pig remained the only casualty of that conflict. Number 4 Central America 1970, when war broke out between the states of Honduras and El Salvador over a football game. Now, football is known to intensify and encourage aggressive and somewhat violent acts. And as tensions between the two neighboring countries were already running high because of political and economic reasons, the 1970 FIFA World Cup qualifier was reason enough to let war break out. During that time, El Salvador faced harsh economic problems, as their population was roughly 50% larger at only 20% of the size of Honduras. So naturally, many Salvadorans were looking for work in the neighboring country, resulting in over 300,000 illegal immigrants by 1969. Pressured by the wealthy large landowners who owned most of the land in Honduras, the government enacted a new land reform that especially targeted these Salvadoran immigrants. Thousands of them were expelled from Honduras under the new law, even those who had legally occupied land for decades or were already married to a Honduran. All of this led to a general rise in tensions between the two countries. Now enter the 1970 FIFA World Cup qualifier, in which these two countries met. The first game, which Honduras won 1-0 in their capital, was already followed by fights between the fans. The second game, in the Salvadoran capital, which was won 3-0 by El Salvador, was followed by even greater violence. The loss and the exaggerated reports of the events after the game then triggered mass violence against Salvadorans in Honduras. The situation got so out of hand that many had to flee back across the border. The deciding game in Mexico City was won by El Salvador, 3-2. That same day, El Salvador dissolved all diplomatic ties with Honduras, stating that the government of Honduras had not taken any effective measures to punish the crimes against the Salvadoran citizens, which constitute genocide. Within the next two weeks, the situation escalated, as small skirmishes were followed by a full-blown invasion by El Salvador. Though the war could be quickly stopped through international pressure and lasted for only 4 days, it cost over 3000 people their lives and over 300,000 people were made homeless. The borders between the two countries officially closed and trade was disrupted, which left the two already poor countries in an economic crisis for decades. Those were 4 wars started for the stupidest reasons. Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.